Good morning, this is Robin Brooks here, your teacher for this morning. I ain't got too much to teach you this morning, but I do have some words for you on this morning from the book of Proverbs as well as a song. So let's pray and thank the Lord for this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, thank you once again, Lord God, for blessing us with a moment of life health and strength. Lord God, our bodies is not like it was when we were young. So Lord Jesus, we, I ask that we would just be grateful with what we have and to continue to use everything that you have given us for your glory. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So this morning I'm going to read for, to you, well, let's see. All right. Psalm, um, hymn number 446, and it reads as this, Jesus, and shall it ever be, a mortal man ashamed of thee, ashamed of thee whom angels praise, whose glory shine through endless days, ashamed of Jesus, that dear friend, on whom my hopes of heaven depend. No, when I blush, be this my shame, that I no more revere his name. Ashamed of Jesus? Yes, I may, when I've no guilt to wash away, no tears to wipe, no good to crave, no fears to quail, no soul to save. Till then, nor is my boast in vain, till then I boast a Savior slain. And oh, may this my glory be, that Christ is not ashamed of me. And um, I think uh, Joseph Grigg in 1774, but it says, uh, I guess ALT means alternate or altered by Benjamin Francis in 1787. Isn't that something? Ashamed of thee. Mm -mm. We are not ashamed of the. Lord Jesus Christ, are we? Nah, we're not ashamed. So thank you, praise the Lord for that one. And this is a uh, Proverbs that um, one of my mentors from Refuge Orangeburg, um, Dr. Ruby Whetstone Jameson Wright, and we used to call her Sister Ruby May. And this, this is a Psalm that she loved, and I'm gonna read it to you this morning. I mean, not a song, but a proverb, Proverbs, chapter four, and it says, hear ye children, the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart return my, excuse me, let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. And this is the one that Dr. Wright loved so much. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. That was, that was her favorite and she would say that to us and I didn't get it at first. I understand it now. All right, let's continue to read. Verse nine here in Proverbs four. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom, I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Excuse me. 
Yep, let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Now, when I started teaching Bible studies, at, I, I, I'm going to let you know where I was. I was on my sick bed, and, um, and I was in a dark place because you know, to be saved and then all of a sudden, you know, um, at that time I was physically active, physically fit. I was walking over three miles, three times a week. I was getting ready. Well, I was already in school I, and everything. And I had already just seemed like everything was lining up. I, uh, my husband was called to the ministry and I was, uh, you know, just getting myself prepared because I never thought um, about being a minister's wife. I was so happy. My husband was a, was a, um, was a usher. I was proud, man. My husband is the usher. And I remember the night, I can't remember what day it was. And I woke up that night, it was around 12 o'clock. And I had such a chest pain. And it was just so bad. And see, my husband went to work early as he, you know, and, and, and he, and he was asleep. And so I didn't want to wake him. So I went out and I sat in my recliner and I just sat there and my recliner rocks. And so I just sat there and rocked and prayed and, 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 you know, and, and, and that was the beginning of the illness. And by the time I got to the emergency room, they had pumped me so full of steroids because I had several different infections throughout my body from, from around my heart to, you know, just infections everywhere else. And so that was the beginning. And then day by day, I stayed in the hospital. I would get out and be back in the hospital, back in the emergency rooms. And that went on for months, you know, in and out of the emergency room, in and out of the hospital. And one day I was laying in the bed and I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, I am just, I, 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 I'm, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this because all my life as a young person, I avoided drugs and alcohol. I avoided it all my life, not because I was saved, but because that was some, that was my own personal conviction. And then when the Lord saved me, it was even better. But I remember lying on my sick bed and the Lord said two words to me, red work. And I didn't know what that meant. And that meant get up out of the bed and go look it up. So I looked it up. And then I start doing, um, you know, the cloud, the, the, the drugs that, that they had me on, start clearing up as I start studying and, 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 and reading about it and, and then practicing it. And then the Lord got me up, woke me up again one night and he said, type. And so I went to the computer, I opened up the computer, opened up my Bible, and all of a sudden words just start flowing out of my fingers. And I was typing and I was like, oh, wow, that was a good Bible study, you know, thinking that it was to me. And it was. I, I Now, I don't know which Bible study that was. And since then, my computer has crashed and I've lost a lot of, of, of good work um, throughout the years. But I remember doing that. And I remember how that this is something that the Lord gave me. So then all of a sudden, then I start studying. I got interested in, in different commentaries and Bibles and whatnot. And so I started reading and studying. That is how I began my journey on wisdom is the principal thing. Then I understood what Dr. Wright was saying. And so then when you look at verse seven, and then I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it from NASB. It says, the beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. And with all your acquiring, get understanding. And I'm going to continue to read here. Verse 8 says, prize her and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. 
when you look at what the word of God is telling you, when you start studying it and 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 get and get a different angle on it, get a get, you know, Matthew Henry, a good commentary, you know, um, it's just so many other places that you can go and get that understanding, that wisdom. Just like, okay, when I read you guys from my song book. I we are seeing words that people from hundreds of years ago. I mean, that was if, if I'm not mistaken, um, Lawrence. Well, I can't pronounce his name, so I go to Gerald Moultrie. In 1867, he wrote this, and this is the song here, six uh, hymn number six 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 fifty three. Behold, the bridegroom cometh in the middle of the night. And blessed is he whose loins are girt, whose lamp is burning a bright. But woe to that dull servant who the master shall surprise, with lamp untrimmed, unburning, and with slumber in his eyes. There are so many of us that can write poetry like that. There are so many of us that can place that poetry into a sermon. There's so many of us that can take their musical instrument and play a melody that will go with that song. Now, I, if I'm not mistaken, the Jubilee Choir has, has their own way of singing that song, so I, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is this, the wisdom, the knowledge, the the gifts that God has given each and every one of us. We can use that to the glory of God. Look at, listen how it says, prize her and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. There is so many jobs in the church. Everybody don't have to preach. Everybody don't have to preach. And trust me, I am not a preacher. But I do know that my calling is to teach. Love to have students. And when I get stable and everything in my new digs here, I'm going to start my classes back again. I really am. So until then, I'll talk to you if you listen to me. So let me go ahead on and read down to verse 14 and end um, my talk today. All right, verse 10, coming back to King James of Proverbs 4. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou sh um, shall not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. God bless you on this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you once again for all that you've said, given, and done in our lives this day, this moment. I thank you, Lord. Establish our feet, Lord God, and firm up our foundation in you, Lord Jesus so that we can do that which is right and pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Sister Brooks out. Peace be unto you and God bless you.